Hello and we welcome to chapter 8. We're going to look at problems number 4 and 5. These both deal with proportions. Problem 4 deals with confidence intervals with proportions. Number 5 deals with calculating minimum sample size with proportions. So let's begin. Here's 4. Consumer reports indicates that profit margins, okay, we're looking at profit, blah, blah, blah. Historically, 20% of the digital camera customers have purchased the extended warranty. So in the past, it's 0.2. And they want to increase this, so we want to see eventually if we're confident that the proportion, the population proportion, has increased from 0.2. To test this, for three months, getting a random sample of 514 customers, so we know that n is equal to 514. Let's go ahead and put that there. Um, of those 514, 130 purchased the new warranty. So the number of successes is 130. Find a 95% confidence interval, so we'll go ahead and call this alpha. Since it's a 95% confidence interval, alpha is 0 0.05, or 5%. Um, for the proportion, let's go to the formula. Formula is p hat, plus or minus at z of alpha over 2, times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat, divided by n. p hat is the sample proportion, n is the sample size, and this z of alpha over 2 is the distributional multiplier. This is what takes into consideration the fact that those p hats are having a normal distribution. So the first thing we need to calculate is p hat. This is equal to successes divided by attempts. Second thing we need to calculate is z of alpha over 2. In Excel, this is going to be equal to norm.inv. That's norm.inv because we're giving the function the probability, and we want the z value. And that norm.inv is alpha divided by 2. It is of a standard normal distribution, which means the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. Now that's the z value corresponding to a probability of 0 0.025. We actually need the absolute value of this. So let's use the abs function. And there's our z value. It's 1.95996. Now almost always we're going to round that to 1.96. OK, so that's the information we've gotten from the problem. So let's go ahead and calculate the lower bound. Now, from the book, go ahead and follow along in this formula. The lower bound is going to be the p hat minus that z value times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. So this is going to equal p hat minus, since it's the lower, it's going to be minus that 1.96 times the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by that sample size of n. And there's the lower bound, 0.21534. The upper bound is going to be very similar to the lower bound. The only difference is the lower bound uses p hat minus, and the upper bound is going to be p hat plus. So this will be equal to p hat plus that z value times square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. So we're 95% confident that the true proportion of people who buy these extended warranties is between 0.21534 and 0 0.2905. Since both of those are above the 20%, we're 95% confident, actually more than that, but we're at least 95% confident that the proportion has indeed gone up. Because we're 95% sure it's between these two, and everything between these two is greater than 20%, therefore we're at least 95% confident that the proportion has increased. Now we need to round the answer to three decimal places, so we'll have Excel do that for us. Let's plug in the numbers. 0 0.215, 0 0.290, 0 
yes, we are confident because the entire interval is above that 20%. So this is how you calculate confidence intervals for one sample proportions. Let's move on to part uh, problem 5. The difference between problem 4 and problem 5 is in problem 4 we're given the sample size n and we need to calculate confidence intervals. Well, to calculate confidence intervals, we have to calculate this thing that's to the right of the plus or minus sign, which is called the margin of error. So we calculate the margin of error based on n. For problem 5, we need to calculate n based on the margin of error. And margin of error is everything to the right of the plus or minus sign. And in order to get from this first equation to the second, we just solved the first one for n and did some algebra. And this is the formula we get. This is also in your book. So the minimum sample size is p hat times 1 minus p hat times z over e squared. And that e is the margin of error. So let's see how this is done in Excel with problem number 5. So I'm going to go ahead and clear everything. and start over. Manufacturer of the ColorSmart 5000 claims that 95% of its set test sets last at least five years. Cool claim. In order to test this claim, a consumer group randomly selects 376 customers. Of those 376, 311 say their tel uh, ColorSmart television did not re need repair. So X is 311. N from this sample is 376, which means that P hat is going to equal that 311 divided by 376. So in this sample, 0.82713, or 82.713% of the television sets did not need any repair in the first five years. 65 of them said it did. Okay. So now we need to determine the sample size needed in order to be 99% confident. Ah, so now we need to determine a new sample size in order to be 99% confident. Since it's 99% confident, alpha is going to equal 0 0.01, which means that z of alpha over 2, I'm going to put there, this is norm.inv of alpha over 2. And again, since it's from the z distribution, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1. Again, it gives us a negative number, so we're going to change that to a positive using the absolute value function. So that's the multiplier, the distributional multiplier. But let me make this note. Connect gives us the value it wants us to use, so we should use this value. So instead of the better, more accurate value, we're going to use the 2.575. Okay, so we got a p hat, we got a z. Do we need anything else? Let's check the formula. We've got a p hat, we've got a z, another p hat. Oh, we need an e. We need that margin of error. Let's go and put the e right there. We're given within a margin of error of 0 0.03. So this margin of error is 0 0.03. Now from this information, I'm going to make it red. From this information, we can now calculate a minimum sample size. Now let me emphasize, this is a minimum sample size. And this n down here in cell A9 is not the same n as the cell A3. This cell in A3 was used to get an estimate for p hat. This n down here is the minimum sample size we need in order to be 99% confident. So just to keep the confusion to a minimum, let's call this n star so that we can distinguish between this minimum sample size that we need to get 99% confidence and the sample that we took just to get an estimate for p. So this is equal to, and again, let's pop up the formula. 
this n is equal to p hat times 1 minus p hat times z over e squared. So this is equal to p hat times 1 minus p hat times z divided by e. And let's not forget to square it, squared. So if we get a sample size of at least 1,053.44, we're guaranteed to have 99% confidence for a margin of error of 0 0.03. At least 1,053.44. If we get 1,053, we don't have that level of precision that we desire. We need it to be at least 1,053.44. So the next whole number that's at least 1,053.44 is 1,054. So the minimum sample size is 1,054. So using p equal to 82713, the minimum sample size is 1,054. And that's really why we always round this minimum sample size up to the next whole number as opposed to rounding it to the nearest whole number. Because 1,053.44 is the minimum needed to obtain the precision that we desire. Less than that won't cut it. It has to be 1,053.44 or more. And since we can't have a sample of size 1,053.44 television sets, then we have to round up to 1,054. And that's it. Let's submit. Submit anyway. There's our 8 out of 20. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourselves. Send me emails if you got problems. Bye.